Hey guys, today I'm going to answer the question, when should I buy my fetch lands? And to answer this question, I'm going to split it into two sections. One would be the Kanja Tarkir fetch lands, which the my opinion is you should buy them today if you don't have your set of 20, meaning four of each of them. You should not buy them tomorrow, you need to buy them today to make your playset because I don't see these getting more, I don't see them getting cheaper in the future. Now the second part of my answer would be Zendikar Fetchlands, which I'll try to explain briefly at the end of the video. Essentially, I feel like after Armor Ket, people are going to sell their Modern Masters 2017 cards to buy these Armor Ket cards. This is what happens. It's called the circle of magic gathering life. You get really excited for a set, you buy the set, and then you realize the set cannot be played in standard. So then you sell the set for pennies on the dollar and then for your standard cards and then your standard cards rotate out and become worthless. Cycle of life. So without ranting too much, the Zendikar fetch lands should get a tiny bit cheaper after Armor Ket releases, so you do have plenty of time to pick those up. I don't believe you have that much time to pick up the Kanja Tarkir fetch lands before they really go up in price. Now, Kanja Tarkir is a very interesting set. It is a set that we're looking at right now. As you can see outside the five fetch lands, anywhere between $13 to $19. There is not a card, a, even a Planeswalker, over $5. So the question, should I buy boxes to open this? No. No, no. Do not buy boxes to open this. For you to break even on a box of 110, you have to pull 6 to 7 fetch lands, depending on what they are. You're not going to pull 6 to 7 fetch lands in this box, and there's very little value elsewhere. So fat packs, definitely not. I think fat packs are selling for $55 or $60 right now. I had the option to buy a few, but I just felt kind of, uh, I'm not going to buy it. Boxes are around 100, 110. Uh, and if you want to draft it, if you want to have fun with it, go ahead, do that. But just under, have the understanding that if you open the box, you're not going to break even. It's not one of those boxes. Now, Let's talk about Windswept Heath. I do want to take a long time to talk about Heath and Bloodstained Mirror and the combination of both. Heath has taken a beating. What is different about this card compared to the other four fetch lands and what makes it the cheapest of the bunch? The meta is not good for it. White, green is not very strong in the meta. And most importantly, it has been reprinted in a class deck or some type of weird deck that's no longer being printed anymore so there is slightly more supply about of this card than the other four that being said it's the best regulation of the five and i will tell you the story of uh, steam vents steam vents was a five six dollar card during standard rtr and the temple garden the selesnia version was a 12 15 dollar card so you could literally trade a Temple Garden for free Steam Vents. That's a trade that made sense back then. But what happened was then Steam Vents became a modern playable card when the number one deck, Splinter Twin, was dominating. Then they banned Splinter Twin and they went down again. So the meta in modern, which these fest lands are played in, is very uncertain. You don't know what they're going to do. Could they ban Death Shadow? Absolutely. It would not surprise me if they banned Death Shadow. And when we take a look at Bloodstained Mirror, one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, fetch land when it was in standard. Black Red is wasn't really a deck back then. It's the second most expensive one right now. And that is interesting. That is interesting. And why is it the second most expensive one? You just have to look at Death Shadow, Death Zoo, all the tier one decks involving that card. But could that card get banned? Yeah, it could. And then if that got banned, maybe we go back to Slesnir Colors, Voice of Resurgence, some type of uh, Junk or Merleripod, or maybe we even have uh, Rhinos. Regardless, you do want to take 
time to research it and look at the decks and see what you need. Absolutely make your set of 20 of these first before you go ahead and start speculating. But when you're speculating on land, you never know what land is going to control the meta because you don't know what they're going to print in the next set. You don't know what they're going to ban. You don't know what's going to be unbanned. So typically blue is better, but not always. Bloodstained Mirror, the second most expensive fetch land. I mean, in Contra Tarkir, if you had said this, I don't think people would believe you that it would be an $18 fetch land and would be more than even a blue fetch land, the Flooded Strand, as we'll see later. So Bloodstained Mirror is very pricey right now, which means I do not want to speculate on it because should the Death Shadow and eventually the meta will change because people will get really tired and people will complain and people will go, oh, I don't want to play Death Shadow again. Stop, stop. And then Wizard Coast will go, oh, okay, I guess we'll ban it. Then it will go down. So Polluted Delta is $19. It is a dollar more than Bloodstained Mirror. I mean, that is crazy. Polluted Delta has always been the best. It's always been the best in Legacy. And in Modern, possibly, I mean, it's also in the Death Shadow deck. It gets a little weaker because Gataxian Probe is no longer there. Although, most times you don't, you just pay the life for Gataxian Probe. However, it is a very strong card. It does see play in Legacy, and it is a critical card in the modern decks. I like it a lot. So if you had to pick Polluted Delta or Bloodstained Mirror, you got to pick the Delta, and that's the most expensive card. But it's only $1 difference. I would not invest or speculate in the Mirror at all. I would complete my playset of them and then just leave it at that because the meta has fallen perfectly for it. Same time, I would not put money in Polluted Delta beyond my playset because the meta has fallen perfectly for it. As you can see, the upwards trend. You can see that you could got at $13 at one time pretty recently. Uh, and then you can see that you could have got it. I mean, still 19 is still be beyond me. It's just $19. That's pretty good. Overall, I do like these fetch lands quite a bit. I like them as a general, hey, I'm going to play modern. This is what I need in sequence. So a lot of times you don't have the money to pay for an entire deck or you don't have the money to pay for this and then your lilies and your snaps. Buy Conja Target. If you do not have your set of 20, buy this first before you buy anything else. There's going to be no better long-term hold if you have any interest in playing modern than this particular set. Now, that gets me to Conja Target, a sealed product. I want to take a little bit of time to talk about my personal opinion about sealed product today. There's just too much of it. And you should not be investing in recent sealed product, RTR and beyond, just because you don't know how much of it is still in distributor warehouses. You don't know how much of it is still out there. Yes, this price has been ticking up because you have five incredibly valuable cards in the non-mythic rare slot that is very very rare but when i look at rtr and i think about rtr being older having you know abrupt decay of reprinted of course death right shaman reprinted of course but having overall just stronger cards i have to come to and then jace i mean jace aot is interesting as a speculation i mean it's a very interesting planeswalker because it is seeing play in modern and in my opinion it's it's a Jace, and people are going to want to play Jace. And if they can't play the Mind Sculptor, they'll play AOT. So uh, back to my point, you have to buy singles in Modern. There's no box you can open and like make more money. Like The dream of opening a box and making more money is only available on YouTube, which then YouTube pays you for views. Then that makes sense because you're kind of subsidized. But at the end of the day, Sealed product of any type is in its sealed product is just incredibly difficult to move, incredibly difficult to sell, and not something that an average person can do. Now, if you're a store, you're a distributor, then you already know how to do it. You know, you have a system in place. But if you are a single person or a single car trader, hard, hard to move. I remember having on Craigslist, there was probably two weeks ago, my friend told me about it. 
a guy was trying to move a ton of steel product. He took it to strike zone. They give him a quote. Then he wanted me to match it and pretty much go up a little bit. And I was just like, you know what? This is a really good deal because it was at pretty much buy list prices. And buy list prices on strike zone are not that high on sealed product. They're very good on singles and legacy cards, but not sealed product. So I, I was tempted to buy it. And then I had to say no because my dog got really sick. And that, um, but the prices that I had to pay for the sealed product at the buy list was not very high. Like it's just not high. And I can tell you that it takes a lot of space. And as you get older, space is a premium, especially if you do have a significant other or you have a dog that chews up stuff. You cannot just hold on to these forever and just hope that one day you can sell them to someone who will value them more. The time frame of these products of a booster box or a booster case of Contra Take Care is just too long. You have to wait another five to seven years to sell uh, at a reasonable profit margin. Which gets me to Flooded Strand. I love Flooded Strand. Now, I like Windswept Heath better, but not because it's a it's the best version of the fetch lines. I like it because it's the cheapest. And whenever you want to speculate, you got on real estate, always speculate on the cheapest because the meta will shift itself. So Lesnia was bad one day, it will become very good the next day. Now, when would that be? That will be whenever anyone is tired of, when everyone's tired of Death Shadow dominating modern, then they'll complain and whine, and then there are some, there'll be a new deck, and you don't know what the color of that new deck is because it might rely on cards that we don't know exist yet. So Flooded Strand, I do love Flooded Strand. I mean, at $15 for a blue fetch land, too, that's a good one. That is a good one, as you can see from the curve, because it's not Death Shadow colors. It has struggled to really go up in price, and it's something that uh, it. I have to look into. I kind of wish this was the cheapest one, because then it wouldn't be an instant buy. I don't like Windswept Heath for the two reasons I mentioned. A, it's Lesnar. I personally don't like Lesnar. And B, it was in a supplemental product. Guaranteed. So lastly, we are going to talk about when is the best time to buy the Zendikar fetch lands, the enemy fetches. And the answer is soon, but I'll probably make another video when it is actually the time. It's going to be after Amarket Pro Tour. That is when people are going to need money. And the way that they can get money is if they sell their Zendikar fetch lands from Modern Masters 2017. And we're going to see a big supply of it. I just want you guys to know that the reason that the boxes are the prices they are and then the expected value, modern players do not open packs. Modern players are always told buy singles, buy singles. Casual players open packs. Modern Master 2017 at $10 a booster pack is not for casual players. Therefore, you have lots of supply and a second print run out already out but you don't see the boxes really going down in price and you don't really see the singles going down in price. And I can explain that in greater detail. You need a event. And I think the event is gonna be the Amaket Pro Tour to have people selling the cards when they honestly shouldn't. They should probably be keeping them, but you know, you have an event, you, you don't have infinite amount of money and you have to get more money for the new cards and because your store plays standard mostly at FNM and you want the new standard deck, you want the new Lily, you want the new Gideon. Oh, okay, I'm gonna sell you a bunch of fetch lands. And the store gets fetch lands, they get a lot, and then the store can put some fetch lands on TCG player if no one in the store wants to buy them physically. And then you multiply this across hundreds of stores in the US and Europe and wherever you may live. And that's how prices go down for something like fetch lands. But yeah, it is quite interesting. Like no one's opening boxes of Modern Masters because by definition, modern players are told by singles. And the modern player is most likely to heed that warning. And therefore people cracking the boxes are much slower than if it was a, com let's say it was like a commander booster pack, right? Or Amaket. Amaket, the probability of a casual player buying a box or opening a pack is very, very high. 
they can find it at Walmart, they can find it at Target, they can do all type stuff. So your probability of getting supply of Gideons will come from casual players as well. Modern Masters, some of them don't have cards. Some of casual players do not have card shops. Some casual players do not want to spend $10 on a booster pack. Therefore, you have a whole, uh, you have the majority of people opening packs not wanting to open this product. Therefore, the price structure is very strange. I, I mean, it's, it's too, it's, this video is already 15 and a half minutes. I can't go into too much detail of what I believe is happening there. But if you want me to leave me a comment and maybe I'll make a more, much more extensive video because it is very interesting to see what's happening with Modern Masters 2017 in terms of who's opening it, what, what are they doing with their product that they opened, are they keeping it, are they selling it, and uh, the casual versus the modern player. The modern player actually does not want to open packs of Modern Masters 2017 because they understand that it's risky and they will lose money, so they just wait for other people to open packs. But casual play people do not want to open packs, and they're the, most, they're the person most likely to open packs because casual players are not going to spend $10 on a boost pack when they can get free boost packs or two and a half. I don't know how it works out. And yeah, that's not what they want to do. They don't want to spend $240 on the box. They want rather have two boxes. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.